Hello and welcome back to SaaS Bootcamp. This is week three, video eight. In this video, we are going to talk about a class exercise for this week and the class homework. Uh, I'm going to be showing the exercise and the homework on my screen right now. So if you don't have access to these notes files, just save your, uh, pause the video at this point and take a screenshot so you can have access to what you need to complete. Um, before we begin, let me go ahead and first introduce the data set that we will be working off of for both the exercise and the homework. We'll talk about what's in the data set, what are the columns in there, and then we will come back to what you actually need to accomplish. Um, I have loaded this data set onto the SAS Studio. So if you're enrolled for this course in SAS Studio, you should be able to access it. The data set is called NDC underscore PHAD 690. Um, this data set is actually what is traditionally called an NDC file. In health outcomes research, an NDC file is basically a list of all the drug names that are commonly prescribed in a pharmacy. NDC or National Drug Code is basically a way to identify these medications and a given NDC is like an ID variable, if you will, for each medication. And each medication uh, in this data set has this ID variable along with several pieces of information associated with it. Uh, the ones that we are interested in are this one called full category name, which tells you what is the class and subclass for that medication. So for example, the first row is cardiovascular agents, agents for hypertensive emergencies, which is for blood pressure. If you scroll, you'll see things for pulmonary hypertension and several other classes as well. There is an obsolete date. This obsolete date basically tells you what date that NDC expires. That NDC, the unique ID for each medication, when it is generated, Actually, it has an expiry date, and uh, this NDC expires or stops being used on the date and the time provided in this column. So that's what this column tells you. We have a column called GBO, where we find out of the medication in question, if it is generic, if it is branded, or other. So G is generic, B is branded, O is other. AWP is average wholesale price. This uh, column tells you what is the average wholesale price of the medication. AWP is a, a weak proxy for the cost of a medication. It's not right, and reimbursement for medications in the United States is a lot more complicated, but that goes beyond the scope of this video. Just know that AWP is our substitute for price. The generic name is the name of the active ingredient in that medication. The generic name variable, for example, on the first row here is diazoxide, is not unique to each medication. So several NDCs may have the same generic name. Right. So we are concerned with you, each unique medication, which may or may not have a variety of active ingredients within it. Um, so having understood what this data set looks like, let's go back into our exercise today and talk about what our goal is. The goal for this exercise is to identify how many NDCs or those ID variables for each cardiovascular medication subclass, how many of them go obsolete for each year between 2000 and 2020. Um, and I've listed out how you can do this. First, you need to create a subset of all cardiovascular agents from this medication. You can identify cardiovascular agents by looking for the term within quotes, cardiovascular agents in the full category name variable. This is important because if you go and look in this data set, you'll see that cardiovascular agent is the name of the class, not the subclass, but the bigger class is cardiovascular agents. There are many cardiovascular agents. If I scroll to the next 100 rows, You'll see there are agents for pulmonary hypotension. Uh, there are aldosterone receptor agonists. Angiotensin II inhibitors, so on and so forth. Uh, there is actually even some, let's see if I can show the example. Okay, there is even some central nervous system agents in this data set. So there are some non-cardiovascular agents in this data set because there are 15,000 rows in this data set and you only want to be utilizing cardiovascular agents for this exercise. So first you need to subset this data set to only select the cardiovascular agents. Next, the variable obsolete date tells you a date, the date that an NDC will go obsolete. Identify the format that the obsolete date variable is in, and then try to convert this into a date nine format, the one that we are used to doing. Now, I have not presented the function to do this as part of my videos, but I've given you a hint here that you need to use the date part function to do this. So if you want to use the date part function, go to Google, type in SAS date part function syntax, or go to SAS help and look up the date part function and try and work through 
how to convert the obsolete date from the format it is shown to a date nine format. Once you completed that, then identify how many NDCs in each drug class are going obsolete in each year between 2000 and 2020, and I provided some method hints. The way to do this is to first identify the obsolete year for each row. Once you've done that, use the retain function and identify how many NDCs go obsolete in each year within each medication subclass. Once you've got that, you then need to transpose your file such that there is only one row per medication class. That concludes your exercise for this week. Now your exercise will let you practice skills related to reading across rows and transposes, but it does not let you practice your do loops. So your homework is going to be a little more involved this week. You'll have to complete two separate pieces of code for this homework. The first one, uh, and both of them, by the way, use the same data set, NDC underscore FAT 690, which we just saw. Um, I'm showing the homework on my screen right now. If you don't have access to this file, now is your chance to pause this video, take a screenshot, so you can work on your homework before Friday. All right, let me take, describe what uh, your homework's objectives are. The first objective for your homework is to identify which drugs are more expensive, branded medication or generic medication. For those of you that have been working in healthcare or in healthcare outcomes, which I know many of you have, uh, you must know that branded medication is more expensive than generics. That's usually a pretty solid rule of thumb. Uh, but let's see if we can identify that using this data set. So what I want you to do is the following steps. For each drug, and by drug, I mean generic name, the active ingredient in the drug, in the data set, calculate the average price for all generics and all brands because each active ingredient can be distributed as a generic drug or a brand drug, right? Uh, so for each of them, I want you to calculate the average price for generics and for brands. And I want you to use the AWP variable to calculate that average price. And if you want to calculate the average price, a useful hint is that you need two steps to do it. First, calculate total price across all NDCs and then divide by the number of NDCs in that group that you are interested in. Next, round up that average price to two decimal places. And this file should not contain any variables except generic name, GBO, which is generic or brand, and then the average cost variable. Next, use your proc transpose to change the structure of the data set so that now it has three variables, right? Um, generic name, which displays the unique generic name of the drug, average brand cost, so average cost for that generic name for branded drugs, and average cost for that generic name for brand, generic indices. Uh, and you can use the generic name functions to get the way you can use the rename function, excuse me, to get the variable names exactly right. The rename function I have not introduced earlier in my videos. So you might have to Google that and try to teach yourself how the rename function works. Uh, and then based on a visual comparison of the numbers in your data set, do you believe the cost of the generic medication is more or less than branded medication? Now for this example, when you find a data set, remember each unique generic name should be only present in the final data set once. One row per each generic name or per each active ingredient. That's it. You cannot have repetitions like the original data set did. That's objective one for your homework. In objective two, uh, you are going to calculate how much time it takes to pay off each medication depending on that average wholesale price. So imagine that a patient has to pay the AWP for each medication in the data set, but they choose to make their payments in monthly deposits of $10 each up to a maximum of 36 months. There's a maximum of 36 months. And if there is money left over, then all of that remainder amount has to be paid off during the 36 months. So nobody can take more than 36 months to pay it off. But if your drug is not that expensive, maybe you can pay it off in fewer months than 36. So what you need to identify is how many months it takes to pay off each medication in this data set. In order to do this homework, you will use the do loop to complete this objective. You can use either the do while or the do until loop in order to complete it. The counter variable in your do loop should have a maximum of 36 months. And the final data set that you create should have only three variables, the NDC code, the AWP, and the third variable that shows the number of months needed to pay off the medication. That third variable, you can call num underscore months. If you wanna call it something else, you are welcome to do so. So there's your exercise and your homework for this week. Now's a good time to stop this video and try to do this on your own, which I strongly encourage because if you try to work through this on your own, you are much more likely to be uh, better familiar with SAS. But uh, I'm gonna pause for a brief second and I'm gonna pick up and complete the exercise right now. We will come back and work on the homework problems on Friday.
All right, those of you that are going to pause, I hope you've already done that. For the rest of you, um, or if you're coming back after you've passed, here is the solution for the exercise. The first thing we need to do in this exercise is identify all the cardiovascular agents. Right? So let me create a new data set called cardiovascular indices. Excuse me, I can try for here. Uh, this first step actually can be pretty um, pretty flexible. There are multiple ways to do this step. If you open the data set, you will see that cardiovascular agents is present at the beginning of the full category name variable, but cardiovascular agents is not the only thing that is present. There is also these three hyphens followed by agents for hypotensive emergencies. And that part actually changes because later you get agents for pulmonary hypertension and so on and so forth. So how do you pick out just the cardiovascular agents from this data set? Well, there are two ways, there are three ways to do it really that I can think of. You might be able to think of even more ways to do this. One thing I can do, one approach I can take is I can take the full category name variable, parse out the first two words of the full category name variable, that is cardiovascular agents, and then let to see if it actually says cardiovascular agents or if it is some other medication class that I'm not interested in. So how do you parse out text out of a string variable? Well, you can use either the scan function or the substring function, right? So I want to show you guys both ways to do this. Uh, if I were to use the scan function, I can say scan category name, and we are scanning for the first part of the variable based on that as my scanning x. So what this is doing is it SAS is going to look through the full category name variable, identify where this delimiter or where this string of characters, the three hyphens occur, and then it's going to parse out the first part of the variable before that happens, which should be cardiovascular agents, right? So that's one way to get it. The other way to get it is to use the substring function. We know, for example, that cardiovascular agents is always the first part of that variable, and we know the exact length of the substring uh, of the cardiovascular agents uh, string of characters, if you will. So I know, for example, if I count, if I start from the first character, if I start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and so on and so forth, you will get to 21 characters by the end of this. So if you pass out the first 21 characters of, of this variable, full category name, and those 21 characters should be equal to cardiovascular agents, and then you can confirm if it works for you or not. Once you've identified it, you can then write a simple if then statement. You can say if category one equals, um, cardiovascular agents, then output. That's it. Now, I want to use my low case operator just so that the, the upper and lower case names don't throw off my if then statements, but this should give me exactly what I need. Let me go ahead and run it and we can check if it works. Log looks good. Output. You can see here that category one and category two both parsed out that full category name variable exactly as we wanted them to, right? So no matter which one you use, it should have worked just fine. Having said that, there is another way to do the same, same thing we have done just now without using an if-then statements. That is to use a where statement. The advantage of the where statement is that it actually allows you to use something called the contains operator, which we have not discussed so far in this bootcamp. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. There you go. So what this sentence in SAS is showing is that if you take a low case version of the full category name, and you just look for the string cardiovascular agents in it. The contains operator, what it does is it basically says, look for this string anywhere in this variable. It might be in the beginning, it might be in the middle, it might be in the end, it might be anywhere in that variable, but it happens all together. It just nested somewhere within that string. And as long as it finds a match, this condition is met. And because this is a where statement, it only holds on to the rows where the condition is met. If the condition is not met, if it does not find the cardiovascular agent string in the full category name variable, 
will go ahead and delete those rows, which is exactly what we are looking for. So um, yeah, so no matter which of these three options you use to complete your, your uh, task, they all should work the same, but I'm gonna go ahead and run this just to make sure it works. In this where statement, we didn't create an additional variable to check, but you can see here that we only have 11,000 rows and they're all cardiovascular agents. Let me see if I can scroll to the bottom and confirm that. Look at that. So they're all cardiovascular agents in our final data set. So I know it worked just fine. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use. I've commented out the previous ones here. So now you now have just the where statement so we can continue to use that. The next thing you need to do is you need to work with this obsolete date variable which actually is what is called a date time format. This date time format in SAS shows you the date and the time associated with it, right? Now we are only interested in the date of this variable. We don't care about the date time format. And the way to separate the date out of that is to use the date, date part function. Again, this is not a function that we have discussed during this bootcamp, so you would have to look this up. Uh, because there are just so many SAS functions out there and there is absolutely no way I can cover every single function as part of this bootcamp, I will continuously keep challenging you all to go discover new functions, to go look up and Google and use SAS help to understand syntax for more and more functions. This exercise is one way to do that for me. The homework will also have certain things that you will have to explore on your own. Anyway, the way the date part function works is you just feed the obsolete date variable into it I hope I spelled that right. Yeah. Uh, and then it should give you the date out of, uh, it should partition the date out of that obsolete date variable. Let's see if it works. So here is our obsolete date variable. And here is our new date. Now this new date is, is numeric and it's very weird numbers right now. But if you remember that is happening because it, this is uh, all dates are numbers in the background, right? We need to format it, right? So for that, let me use the format statement. So I'm formatting this new date variable that we just created into the date nine format, which is what we want to see. This was the obsolete date variable. And here's the date nine. And you can confirm it worked well because 06 March 2027 should be the same as what's here. 01 January 2006, 01 January 2006. So we know the date part and the format statements work just fine. So there you have it. The first data step here completes two things. It, it subsets the data set to only cardiovascular agents. And second, it, uh, it separates out the date out of the obsolete date function and, use, and sets a format on it. And with these simple lines of code, we've now worked on a data set with 15,000 rows. So I just want you to take some perspective and appreciate what you're accomplishing with SAS and how easily we can accomplish these things, right? So now uh, from 15,000 rows, we've gone to 11,000 something rows. So we are still dealing with a large data set. Let's go on and, uh, and look at the next step in our homework, in our exercise. Uh, next, we need to identify the date in which, the date at which this, uh, the year in which this obsolete date actually is happening. Uh, we can actually go ahead and do that within, within this data step itself. So I'm actually not going to move to a new data set. Um, let me add some comments first. So if you want to identify the year in which NDC goes obsolete, just use the year function on the new date variable that we just created, right? So if the new date variable is 2006, 1st January 2006, we only care to know that it happened in 2006 and you can get that using simply the year function. I'm gonna run that. And there you have it. This is the year where um, the NDC is going obsolete. Now, having known this, Let's move on to the next step, which is identifying how many NDCs in each drug class are going obsolete in each year between 2000 and 2020. So that's, that's a pretty complex sentence there. Let's try and break it down first. What we need to identify is how many NDCs, okay, 
go obsolete in each year between, let me open this data set, okay. How many NDCs go obsolete within each year between 2000 and 2020 within each cardiovascular agents medication subclass, right? So we need to first, I didn't think of this in terms of buckets and handles. The first bucket we need to think about is these medication subclasses. This class we're seeing right here, agents for hypertensive emergencies is one bucket, right? This bucket begins here, this is the first variable, and this bucket ends here for the last variable. So that's one bucket we need to think about, but that's not the only bucket, we need to have more buckets because not only do we need to identify how many NDCs are in this bucket, we need to identify how many NDCs expire in each year, right? So within the bucket, which is medication class, we have some buckets or nested buckets or smaller buckets, if you will. Each bucket corresponds to one year that, uh, uh, that the NDC is expiring in. So this year variable is our second bucket. So we have two buckets. One is the medication class, hypertensives, pulmonary hypertension, vasosuppressors, vasodilators. This is the one bucket. Within that are several buckets which correspond to which year that the NDC is expiring in. So if we want to use these buckets and define our handles, we need first dot and last dot variables. But if we want to use first dot and last dot variables first, we need to sort our data set. So let me write the sorting program first. I want to sort my cardio underscore NDC data set. And I want to sort it by full category name and by year of expiry. Remember, we have two buckets. Right, so I have to sort the data set by both bucket variables. My first bucketing variable if there is the full category name. The second one is the year in which that NDC expires. Let me go ahead and sort that. Log looks okay. You can look at our output data set if you'd like. So for hypertensive emergencies, you can see that in 2002, three NDCs expired. In 2003, just one NDC expired. There were no NDCs expiring in 2004, but in 2005, there was one NDC, 2006, two, 2007, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine NDCs expired in 2007, so on and so forth, right? So you can see that within hypertensive emergencies, my bigger bucket, there is now a smaller bucket, which is year in which the NDCs expired. So now let's write our code, oops. Let's write our code to set, um, Set our handles and define our bucket. Cardio underscore NDC by, and I'm just gonna paste what I had in my by statement for the proc sort. And as soon as I've done this, now I can, I can start defining my first dot and last dot variables. But instead of typing first underscore full category name, first underscore year, I'm just gonna use the implicit ones hidden within this data set without actually having to write that code. Uh, what I do need to do though, is I need to retain a count variable, which counts how many NDCs occur in each of my buckets. Once I've retained it, I need to say if first dot year, so if the year variable, which is my smaller nested bucket, if that is coming in for the first time, then count should be set to one. And if it is not first dot year, excuse me, I forgot then statement here, okay. Then count equals count plus one. Just going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to make, again, I'm going to look at this and see if it works right. Because I needed to count the NDCs within my smaller bucket, right? Um, I'm going to take out some of these variables that we don't need for now. Um, I don't need the new date variable. I don't need the generic name variable. New date variable. Okay. So here is my, here is the variable I'm counting. Here is my bigger bucket. Here is my smaller bucket, 2002, 2003, 2005, 2006. Here is my count variable, right? So within my smaller bucket, you'll see count is incrementing from one, two, and three. As soon as I move to a new bucket, count resets at one. New bucket, count resets at one. New bucket, count resets at one. And then count increments to two. And then new bucket again, counting resets to one and goes all the way down to nine. And then once we change the buckets to 2009, we are back at count one. And this is all happening at my smaller bucket level, right? This is still within agents for hypertensive emergencies for each year, we are counting how many NDCs are expiring. If you wanna scroll down and look at pulmonary hypertension, you can see that uh, in 2003, one 
NDC expired in 2007, two, three, four NDCs expired. 2008 was just one, 2009 was two, um, 2009 was six, 2011 had one, so on and so forth, right? So this is working exactly as I want. What I need to do is now delete every row that is not the last occurrence of that, of that bucket. Because if you remember for 2002, three is the number I want to hold on to. I don't care about one or two, right? So let me go ahead and delete the other ones. So if last dot year, then output, because I don't care about any of the other rows in my data set. And then I'm only going to hold on to the variables that I'm interested in, which in this case is full category name, year, and count. I don't need the NDC because I've counted the number of NDCs and placed that in my count variable. Let's see, uh, let's check my log quickly. And you see now that I only have one row for each of my smaller bucket. So for antihypertensive emergencies, which I have uh, 11 rows for that, we have years going from 2002 all the way to 2027. And I have num how many uh, NDCs expire in each of those years. Now, if you will remember our exercise, it was only interested in, um, in NDCs expiring between 2000 and 2020. So 2027 is not interest, is not of interest to us, but we can talk about how to eliminate it later. Um, for agents of pulmonary hypertension, you will see there are about 10 rows here. And for each row, we have a certain year and how many NDCs expire in that year, right? So I, I think this works exactly as we wanted. What we need to do now is transpose this data set in order to have our final data ready. Um, so let me go ahead and say data. I want to call my final data set cardio NDCs obsolete. I will set my week three exercise file. Oh, excuse me. What I need is to, I need to do a transpose. Let me write my transpose command here. Followed by my out command. And I realize I've got them backwards. Okay, so I want to take my week three exercise data set. I want to transport it and I want to transport it out into the cardio underscore NDC obsolete data set. Um, let's see, what do I, I want to transpose while transposing. It's always good to look at what your data set looks like now. So this is what I need to transpose. While transposing, I want to hold this full category variable constant. And then I want to transpose this count variable as my different columns, right? So let's see. By full category name, the variable I want to transpose. I forgot my semicolon. Okay. Let's see now. Log looks okay. Output data. Now I have full category name, agents for hypertensive emergencies. I like this because I only have one row for each medication class, which is perfect. And now I have all of these columns up here, but I don't know which column is for which year, right? That's very confusing because column one could be 2000, it could be 2002, it could be 2005. I, I don't know which one it is. And this name variable just tells me that this is count. It doesn't tell me what year it was. So in order to get my names correct, I need to add an ID statement here. The ID statement, um, I'm gonna set my year variable here. And what that ID statement does is it tells SAS that while you're transposing, then please use the values in the year variable to name my newly transposed variable. So instead of COL1, COL2, COL3, please use the text that was in the YR variable to name those, uh, to name those new columns. Okay, let's see if that works. There you go. So now you can see that for agents for hypertensive emergencies, 2002 is the name of the column because 2002 is when uh, 
that 2002 is the year where those NDCs expired. 2003, one NDC expired. 2005, one NDC expired. 2006, two NDCs expired. Now, I like this, but I don't like just having the number 2002 as my uh, column name. So I'm going to add a little prefix to that, make it look a little more presentable. I'm going to call it um, obsolete year underscore 2002. I'm going to call it obsolete year. I think SAS already adds that uh, underscore. No, I guess not. I, I would like an underscore in my variable name. Okay. There we go. So now we have obsolete year 2002, obsolete year 2003, 2005, so on and so forth, all the way up to obsolete year 2020. Right? And sometimes there are missing values if there are no NDCs expiring in that year for that medication class, but sometimes there are lots of medications expiring. And we have now 20 rows for each of the 20 subclasses within cardiovascular agents. So you can look at this data set to say that renin inhibitors, for example, have um, eight NDCs expiring in 2027, but no NDCs expiring. Well, in 2016, they had three NDCs expiring and one NDC in 2019 that expired. And then you can look at, let me take another example, the anti-anginal agents, 46 NDCs expired in 2002, 34 in 2003, 71 in 05, 78 in 06, 102 in 07, so on and so forth. So this data set gets me what I wanted to do, but I still have some problems. I don't want to see this underscore name, underscore variable. Uh, and if you, if you will scroll through this, you will see we still have the obsolete year 2027. I don't want that because my uh, homework says I'm only interested, my exercise objectives say I'm only interested in NDC ex NDCs expiring between 2000 and 2020. So let me go ahead and create my final data set. NDC data, final data set. I want to set this file. And I need to do two things. I need to drop the underscore name underscore variable and I need to drop the obsolete year underscore 2027 variable. And that should be everything I need to finish this exercise. Check my log, looks okay. Output data, there you go. So we've got full category name and every single year separate, uh, presented in a separate column for how many NDCs are expiring. So we just went from a data set that has 15,000 columns, excuse me, 15,000 rows and six columns, 15,752 rows, six columns, which had this obsolete year presented in this format in obsolete date. We transformed this data set into a new data set, which has 20 rows and 20 columns, one row for each medication subclass, along with NDCs expiring information presented in this way. Pretty impressive, huh? And all it took for us to do this transformation was a few lines of code. I'm gonna save this file in our SAS Studio library so that you can access it later. I wish you all good luck with the homework. Please ask me questions over Twitter for topics you want me to repeat when I do our uh, Q&A video on Friday. If you have any other questions about the homework itself or doubts about how to work on it, please feel free to send them my way and I will do my best to answer your questions. Thank you all. I hope you have a good week.